Welcome to Brixton. You know how the lyrics go. Located here in the heart of South London, this place is a vibrant and diverse hotspot for food, culture, music, sport and much more. Brixton's heart beats 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, with so much going on all over the place. The area is iconic in many ways. You have musical legends like Sir David Bowie who was born here. You have Electric Avenue which was the first market street to be lit by electric lights here. And you have the area being mentioned in Taylor Swift's song London Boy. What else could you wish for? For sure, Brixton has a rich history in modern culture. Brixton is home to nearly 80,000 people with a sizable African and Caribbean population. In 1948, HMT Empire Windrush set sail from Jamaica, docking in Tilbury, bringing in around 500 Caribbean migrants, with most settling in Brixton. The Windrush generation, as they are called, who migrated from the Caribbean to the UK, built the foundation for the strong Afro-Caribbean vibes Brixton is revered for. There are many shops, restaurants, barbers, and other small businesses and institutions here built by the Windrush generation, their families, and their descendants. Over time, Brixton has grown into a melting pot of cultures with a mix of Latino, African, Caribbean, Irish, and Eastern European influences forming the community. During this time period, the area has been known to be one of the more rougher areas of London, with a few notable riots taking place in 1981, 1985, 1991, and 2011. I throw back to that guy who stole the basmati rice. What a real G. What a real G. Nah, let me tell you, I fully remember the 2011 riots, man. Oh my gosh, what a time. Because I swear that Brixton was like, uh, it was Brixton, Tottenham and Croydon, which were the heart in London. You were seeing the Foot Locker, Foot Locker was burning, people were, were trying to smash up KFC. I'm like, why KFC? No one touched McDonald's. KFC was was mad. No one touched Morley's because if you touch Morley's, I swear on, you can't touch Morley's. Morley's is. Mm. But yeah, no, people went down the road to the Holfords um, and the Curries. People were robbing TVs, people were robbing all this stuff, yeah. It was mad. I was seeing this all on social media because this was back in the times with BBM. So BBM would have been like, well, everyone's using, well, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook. Facebook, Snapchat and stuff like that right now. But BBM back in those days was the one. And imagine you're seeing this all on TV and then you're seeing that guy, that guy that stole that Tesco Basmati rice. I... <laughs> that will forever be the best thing of those rides. I don't condone violence. I didn't take part in the violence because I'm a child of God. You know, we literally, I remember, we had church in Tottenham. And imagine you're seeing everything that's happening in Tottenham. You're like, kind of mad though still let's just stay inside but yeah what a time that was you know because that spread across the whole country my that, that was a time and a half and hopefully there's nothing like that that's gonna happen again anytime soon because well Brixton's gentrified enough that you're not gonna see that which is good because remember I'm lawfully abiding citizen I do not condone any violence I'm just recollecting all the memories that I have from 2011 it was a good uh, 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 it was a it was a time Brixton is also known to have been home to a number of gangs that people from the 90s, the noughties and the 2010s may remember. A number of members from these gangs have now become successful internationally recognised music artists too. The image of Brixton built as a result of the riots, crime and gang culture used to give the impression to people that the area was a total no-go. If I heard all of that from word of mouth, I'd be shook if and not want to pass through as well. Basically over the last few decades, Brixton, or even Lambeth, the borough it's located in, has been home to a low proportion of middle and high income residents. In 2010, Lambeth was shown to be in the top 10 boroughs in terms of deprivation in London, with similar data classifying it as the 14th most deprived borough in the UK. Brixton is home to a number of social housing estates catering to residents of low income, so this and the high level of deprivation has definitely added to the image of roughness presented by the area. However, nowadays this image is gradually fading away as everyone's new favourite buddy, gentrification, hits SW2 and SW9. Gentrification is defined as a process in which a poor area in a city experiences an influx of middle class or wealthy people who renovate and rebuild homes and businesses and which often results in an increase in property values and the displacement of earlier, usually poorer residents. This is the phenomenon that has manifested itself upon Brixton in recent times. Brixton has moved from being a no-go zone where you wouldn't dare hang out at night or walk through the estates alone, 
to being an up and coming edgy area with a diverse nightlife scene with a wildly different demographic of people now visiting. With the increase of trendy restaurants, coffee shops, bars and restaurants, the area has witnessed the change in Brixton's makeup over the last five to 10 years. Many people have been priced out of their homes due to the rising demand and resulting increased property values in the local area. Some older council housing has been bulldozed to make way for new flashier properties that some previous tenants wouldn't be able to afford if they moved back in. I'm all for building new housing, but it's a shame when the people who've had to uproot their lives for a new development aren't able to return or have been moved so far out, there's no point coming back. You find that sometimes the amenities and services offered by sprouting businesses don't cater as much to the current population, but instead to the newer clientele. You know, think of your pros, your middle class families and those with higher disposable incomes. You got upscale burger restaurants, artisanal cocktail bars, one pop Brixton, and a full on Premier Inn, bro. Premier Inn, bro. I'm telling you, it's actually quite expensive. <laughs> it's quite pricey, I tell you. These are some of the new businesses and venues that have sprouted up in the area, which you can probably, you can probably guess that they don't cater to most of the people who have lived in Brixton in the past. You know when Leon, Itsu and Brett turn up, it's game over for everyone, everyone. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out for a second. Let me, let me land. Yeah. I'm basically now a Euro Pro myself, you know, I do like to dabble in some of the new places, you know, try something new, maybe uh, try a nice burger place or maybe get a five pound coffee, no, no, five pound coffee, no, that's not, that's not me, either way, you get what I mean, you know, I like to, to try the new businesses, new stuff that's coming out, because some of that stuff is actually decent, you know, who can say no to a pint at the Duke of Edinburgh, a night at a Brixton Jam or a cheeky Pret in the morning, but as someone who has grown up in Brixton, I wouldn't be able to afford some of these things regularly. Honestly, it, it wouldn't be possible. Man, even the price of six wings and chips from Morley's has gone up like crazy. Like what? Four pounds? Four pounds. Last week it was 3.30. What? Ah! But it's still cheaper than Glasgow's wings. <laughs> I can't lie. It's still cheaper than Glasgow. And much better. Gentrification has hit Brixton hard and in a sense that has eroded the authentic nature of the area's multiculturalism. Those who have been exploiting and accelerating the gentrification include the investors and the wildly rich property developers, which include the owners of Brixton Market, Brixton Village and Market Row, Honda Enterprises, owned by Taylor McWilliams, rich dude and part-time DJ. <laughs> Fair. I wonder if he's going to play my mixtape. If I shout him, you think he's going to play my mixtape? Hondo Tower is a proposed 20-story office block. Well. Actually, they mention mixed use, but that doesn't really look um, mixed used to me. Which is planned to run along Pope's Road on the approximate location of Sports Direct. The news of this proposal has angered many of the locals, and rightly so, as the development has been described as out of touch and unnecessary. Now, looking at these plans, I don't know how I feel about it, you know? It, it looks nice and shiny, but if it's actually built, who's actually going to be, who is it there for? Basically, who is it there for? For a city and area that's in dire need of more low rent social housing, building a 20, a 20, 20 story office block following a pandemic, is this nonsense? Yes, the plans were definitely drafted before the loco, but with changing working patterns caused by the pandemic, it's made people think like, what's the point? What's the point? As we've seen in other places across the world, projects like these just aim to raise the property value in the surrounding area, which then profits the big companies and the big property developers and the international rich dudes of the world, you know? Does somebody say gentrification? The whole building's inception has been hit by a fierce opposition from local residents, historic England, and even had Sadiq Khan backtracking on a decision not to intervene. That just screams trouble. This is the same Hondo Enterprises, the same Hondo, the same Hondo that in 2020 tried unsuccessfully to evict nor cash and carry a local business on Market Row selling affordable food and groceries. The people fought back, recognizing the importance of the established local business, and nor secured a long term lease from Hondo. One group prominent in the protests were hashtag Save Nor, who alongside hashtag No to Hondo have been campaigning against Hondo Tower. I'll leave a link in the description to the pages and more information of how you can support them. 
Well, I feel like that was a, a bit of a rant about Honda, but you know, feelings like this reverberate all over the gaff, all across Brixton, all across other places that have been gentrified. You know, you've got these rich dudes that are coming in and building their properties, which are not going to be lived in. They're going to be kept empty and increase the property prices. Bro, bro, bro. Yeah, I could go on for ages, you know. I could, I could actually go on for ages, but, 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 I've experienced the positives of gentrification, of course. There's been increased private investment into the area, of course. New businesses, new shops, new restaurants, stuff that we didn't have in Brixton before. This in turn helps bring more job opportunities for people, especially the younger generation. Brixton on Indeed must be absolutely popping right now. You know, it's also brought a better image of Brixton. I would remember years ago, if I was saying I'm from Brixton, the first thing people would be like, oh no, no, that's rough. There's hella gangs, hella crime, hella people getting stabbed and shot. Oh my days, I wouldn't go through there. But you know, even nowadays, okay, yeah, there's still a bit of crime going on and stuff. You know, it's still here and there. But the connotations of Brixton are now trendy and cool and edgy and I, oh, I hate the word edgy with a passion edgy my gosh you know it's crazy I've got friends that I've met after I moved out of Brixton and they're coming down to London they want to come to Brixton they want to go for drinks in Brixton I'm like what fair and then these people are researching oh but hold up you oh, if you've seen that TikTok if you've seen that TikTok if you know what I'm talking about then pain pain but this is why i hate the word edgy i hate the word edgy trendy uh, something can be trendy but you know i'm just rambling but i'm yeah i'm actually just rambling in a sense those who have owned property for a while in brixton have seen their property values increase which would be good for selling or letting also with the increased investment in the local area there are new activities and social opportunities that are available now in brixton you know we've got theater we've got Brewing your own beer. We've got community gardens and all that stuff. It's, it's, it's actually so amazing And also don't forget the many pubs and bars, you know, uh, by the way, I am not an alcoholic um, for legal reasons. I um, I need to recommend that everyone drink responsibly But you know, it's no problem going for a date in Brixton. I'm like look at these places man. These are looking sexy You hey, bring your ting here like this is date central man, you know you're welcome. Cupid is at your rescue. You know, 10 years ago, you would have not, not gone on a date in Brixton. You'd probably go down to like, and Streatham or whatnot, but everyone's coming here now, it's nice. On the flip side, the many negatives come when people realize that gentrification does not equal regeneration. Gentrification has resulted in more money being pumped into the local area. Yes, as mentioned before. However, you've got to look at all the things that money could have been spent on which would have benefited the people already living here. Let's just say over 12 years of Tory rule and austerity hasn't done anything to help. You know, what happened to all the youth clubs and getting young people into different hobbies like sport, culture and art? What happened to funding for schools to help educate these young people to a higher standard? What happened to the funding for more police officers and local support staff to help create a bond between the people and the police to reduce crime? Well, of course, this is in addition to all the other things I've said earlier, but I'm only noting a few things at service level, but you get the gist already. It's the same thing we're seeing across the country with many local authorities having limited funding to actually improve their areas. You know, gentrification should not be the reason why a local area is getting all this money pumped into the local economy. It shouldn't be the reason why crime is decreasing. You know, some of these things happen, but at a trade-off that it's going to be negatively impacting low-income residents. You might also find that resentment towards incomers grows as more higher-income residents move in. People who can't afford to live in these areas might end up having to move elsewhere. And with London prices skyrocketing at the moment, it'd be hard to find other places to move into, especially if social or council housing is required. Basically, a lot of these things, it's blame the government, blame the government, capitalism, capitalism, capitalism. But that's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. Honestly, the Big G is a controversial phenomenon. It has improved Brixton in a few senses for sure, 
but it has also brought its drawbacks. We do love to make fun of it and how it's now the trendy hipster location to be in. But that Afro-Caribbean vibe that it's always had since the first migrants came has just sadly started to fade away, which is a massive shame. I honestly love this place and I'm proud to say that I grew up here, for sure, for sure. Now, as I've said before, am I technically counting myself as a Europa now? Because I'm getting to that age where I'm working, well, I'd be working in London, earning a wage, buying pret a manger coffee, buying the... I need to get the subscription, don't I? Oh, gosh. Gentrification is a weird one because it's like you want to see all the positives and the benefits in the area, but not to the detriment of the people that actually live there. And I could say that I'm part of that group that is being affected. But yeah, it's it's one of those where I want to see I want to see less crime. I want to see more people coming and visiting Brixton. The amount of people nowadays especially from uni or just even just out now when i say when i say that i'm from brixton they're like ah oh, brixton da, 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 da. it's so cool nice and trendy if i said that five ten years ago these people like oh they'd be like oh no no that's dangerous that's dangerous but that's a good thing it's honestly a good thing but in an ideal situation we call that regeneration you know gentrification has the negatives to it regeneration is the one where we all, we all benefit, but of course the government, uh, let's not even talk about politics, well to be fair, it's politics. You know, the government put them in a bin, put them in a bin, because they've not done enough. But it is what it is, isn't it? Actually no, it isn't what it isn't. No, 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 I want to accept that. We are going to have positive change. I manifest it. If you like the video, make sure you drop a like, also drop a comment what you want to see in the future. It's been your boy Summoner Explorers. I'm gonna head to bed. But first, I'm gonna get a model from across the road. And I'll catch you in the next video. In a bit.